Hello, everyone. Welcome once again to our channel, Making Life Easier, and to our series on basic mechanics. Kindly subscribe, like, share the video, and also add any comment and suggestions at the comment section. Today, we are going to continue from where we reach last time solving questions on resultant of three concurrent forces. So this is the part three or example three. Let us look quickly look at our example and how to solve it. Determine the magnitude of F1. the magnitude of the force acting on the bracket is 520 newtons. So this is a diagram. Let's quickly look at how to solve it. Good. So in this question, we have been given the resultant of the force, the resultant force and then we have been given three forces and we are asked to find the magnitude of force F1. So how do we go about that? Don't forget that this has how many forces? One, two, three. And we said that anytime we have three or more forces, we can only use the method of summing components. So first of all, let's get the components for each of the forces. Let's start with force F1. Let's start with force F1. For force F1, this is our F1. It is making an angle of 40 with the X axis. So it means that, don't forget that our direction still remains the same. This side is positive, this side is negative, this side is negative, this side is positive. So we said that we will move from where the force is applied to where the arrow is pointing. So we are moving from this point to that point. Therefore, we are going to move this distance on the X as this, and this distance on the Y. And you can see that this distance is, this distance is in the direction of our positive in the X as this, and on the Y, we are moving up also, which is positive. So this side will be positive, this side will also be positive. But now let's look at the angle. This angle is adjacent to the x axis. So it means that our force in the x axis is going to be force. It means that our f of x1 will be equal to f1 force 40. And from there, we don't know f1, so our answer will be 0 0.760 f1. Let's look at the y component. The y component is now facing our angle. This is the S component. Our Y component is now facing our angle. So our Y component F of Y1 will be equal to F1 sine 40. But don't forget that we are seeing that they are all moving. We'll be moving in the positive axis. X will be positive, Y will be positive. So our F of F1 will be equal to 0 0.6 0.643 F1. Now let's go to force F2. Force F2. This is force F2. So we want to move from where the force is applied to where we, the arrow is pointing. So it means that we'll be moving this distance and then we'll come here. So you can see that this distance on the X is in the direction of the positive. So we are going to get this side our x will be positive but why we are coming down we are coming down we said that when we are coming down on y it's negative so this side will be negative our y will be negative but our x will be positive but the angle here is adjacent to our x the angle here is adjacent to our x axis so it means that the x axis is going to be cos so for f2 our x axis is going to be f x2 is going to be 620 or 30. And that should give us 
536.9 newtons. And then we can do the same for y. So our Fy, don't forget that we are saying that it's going to be negative. So we have negative 620, but the angle is facing our Y. So we are going to get sine 30, and that will give us negative 310 Newtons. Newtons. Then we can quickly do the same for our F3. But now our F3 is not given in angles, it is given in distances. So if this is the horizontal distance, then we can see that if this angle here is theta, then from this to that will be our X, and from this to that will be our Y, right? But here, you can see that the X is three, the Y is four. We are lucky we have been given the hypotenuse at five. So for F3, we can see that from this, if you want to get cos theta, it will be the adjacent over the hypotenuse. And if you want to get this side, it's opposite. So we have opposite the angle. So it's going to be sine theta is equal to four over five. So we can say that cos theta will be equal to the adjacent, which is the three over the hypotenuse, which is five. And then we can see that our sine theta will be equal to our opposite, which is four over five. And from here, we can say that this is the angle. Then look at our X. We said I want to move from this point to where the arrow is pointing. It means that we are going to start this distance. So you look at the direction, it is in the negative X direction. So it means that our F of X is going to be negative, but our F of Y will be moving up. Our F of Y will be moving up. So that is going to be positive, right? And our angle is, this, is our angle is adjacent to the x axis. So it means that our x for the third force is going to be 570 cos theta. And we said that it's going to be negative. And we have already established that our cos theta from there will be 3 over 5. So from here, we can see that our f of x will be equal to negative 342 newtons. And we can do the same for Fy for cos 3. That one is moving up, so we said that it's positive. So it's going to be 570 sine theta, because the angle will be facing that side to sine theta. We have already established that our sine theta from that question is 4 over 5, 4 over 5. So from here, we can see that our FY3 will be equal to 4, 5, 6 Newtons. And from here, we can see that our R will always be equal to RX plus RY. So don't forget that the question is that you should find the force F1. So now we can find F1 using this formula. And from here, we can see that our R will be equal to the square root of Rs squared plus Ry squared. But we know that Rs is the sum of all the x. So let's sum all the x. When we sum all the x, we are going to get 0 0.760 F1 plus the S component for F2, which is 536.9 Newtons. And the S component for F3, which is negative 342. Then from here, our Rx will be equal to 0 0.76 F1 plus 194.9 Newtons. We can also sum our Y, so our Ry will be equal to our ry will be equal to 0 0.643 f1 plus negative 310 plus 456 and from there our ry will be equal to 0 0.643 F1 plus 
1.46 newtons. And from here, you can put them into this formula. You can put RS and RY into this formula. And from there, So from there, we should be able to calculate for our F1. So from there, we can say that our R is given in the question as 520. So we can say that our resultant is given as 520. We can say that 520 will be equal to the square root of our X and our, our RX and our RY, which will be 0 0.760. F1 plus 194.9 all square. The square root again, we are still using the square root. So plus, so under the square root sign, 0 0.643 F1 plus 146 all square still under the square root sign, still under the square root sign. So from here, we can just take the square of both sides, remove the square root. Therefore, we have 520 squared to be equal to, then we expand whatever is in this. So it will be this square plus two times this times that plus this square. And this one will be this square plus this square plus two times this times that. And that will give us 0 0.578 F1 square plus, plus 296.2 F1 plus 376.36 plus 0 0.413 F1 plus 187.76 F1 plus, so this one is F1 squared plus 21316. And from here, you can just group them. You can group the F1 squares and the F1 and the constants. So when you are able to do that, then now to your whole whatever is here, whatever is here, when you put all the squares together, this you put this and that together, you put this F1 and this, you put this F1 and this F1 together, and you put a constant this, that, and that together. Then in that case, you are going to get 0 0.99. 1 F1 square plus 4 8 4 F1 minus 2 1 1 4 4 8 and everything will be equal to zero and from here you can see that we are getting a quadratic equation we are getting a quadratic equation so today I want to give you an assignment you use your calculators to find F1 and F1. You get two answers, and then whatever you get there will be the magnitude of our F1. That is pretty simple. Just go through and try to solve that, and you will be fine. You will be able to get the answers for that. So today, allow me to give you that assignment. Allow me to give you that assignment. And once again, thank you for joining us for today's session. Kindly subscribe, share the video, like, and put your comments and your suggestions at the comment session. Once again, thank you for watching and see you again in our next video. Finally, don't forget to subscribe to the channel. Thank you.